So I'm Mr. Simons and welcome to Employment Contracts Part 2. This is part of 9, 10 Commerce and Employment Issues. If you haven't seen the first video, I recommend you start there. In terms of what we're going to talk about in this video, we're going to mainly focus on, in fact, we're going to exclusively focus on enterprise agreements and common law contracts. In terms of the awards, these are all about setting out minimum pay and conditions. And these were covered in video one. So if you need to go back and have a look at those or you're looking for information about those, that's where you can find it. But in this video, we're looking at the other two types of employment contracts. So let's start with an enterprise agreement. So let's say you sit down with your teacher and negotiate how the class will work. And when I say you, we talk about the whole class. So over here, I've got my very accurate drawing of a teacher. And then here, I've got the drawing of more people here. Over there, there, there. Here, I've got the whole class. So what happens is that the teacher and the class will negotiate about how class works. So this could include uh, what's the policy for being late. This could include what's the story with homework. Uh, this could include um, what do we get if we act really well and we do all the things that are required. So basically what's happening is that a group of, of you, the class, are negotiating with the teacher about how class works. And for our example, this is essentially the story about pay and conditions if we apply this to a workplace. Obviously there aren't pay issues going on inside the class, but there are conditions that are taking place. So the point here is that there is a negotiation process. So, Mr. Simons, what's the point? Why are you talking about this? An enterprise agreement is about is a workplace work sorry, a workplace agreement that is directly negotiated between an employer and a group of employees. So if we look here, instead of a teacher, this is the employer and that they will negotiate with all of their employees. So there's not one standard or one minimum like with an award. This is a process of negotiation. So the employees here are usually represented by a union. And if you go back to video one and you think about the vocab, that the union is a group that is all about promoting the rights of workers. And enterprise agreements can have more conditions, more uh, issues, more categories than an award. They can go a bit broader based on what's happening in that workplace. Enterprise agreements have to be in writing and signed by both parties. And an enterprise agreement must leave workers better off than under the award. Now, this point could be a bit tricky, so let's go through this. An enterprise agreement must leave workers better off than under the award. In fact, there's a test that is applied. It's called the better off overall test also known as boot. 
So if a worker signs an enterprise agreement, it must leave them better off than if they were still under the award, which sets the minimum. So remember this, the boot, the better off overall test. So let's think about the pros and cons of enterprise agreements. In terms of a pro, that they're pretty flexible. So a worker and their boss can negotiate on wages and conditions in a way that suits their workplace. Also think about it, groups are stronger than individuals. So if I get a group together, maybe they can get better pay and better conditions than if I just negotiate it on my own. Also that employers can negotiate productivity increases for wage increases. So that sounds a bit complex, but what we're essentially saying here is that if we work harder, we should be able to get more money. And that's what an enterprise agreement allows for because we can negotiate. Some problems is that in some circumstances, workers may have to work more hours, which could be in conflict with the award. The other, option, other problem is that there could be greater inequality in wage rates between employees because everyone doesn't get the same wage anymore, which they did under the award. So these are some advantages and disadvantages of moving to enterprise agreements. Now, let's look at what's known as common law contracts. So the example here is imagine that just you and your teacher negotiated how the classroom worked. So here we have the teacher and here we have you that there's no class, it's just you. So that what happens is that you and your teacher negotiate in terms of how the class works so that there are no other people to take into consideration. It's just an individual negotiation. All right, sorry, Mr. Simons, what are you talking about if we're talking about employment? So that a common law contract covers people who are not covered by awards or enterprise agreements. They are outside of that system. And they are common among managers and senior staff. So people that are more senior, people that have higher pay, people that are more experienced, people that have negotiating power. All of these things are quite important. And remember that they're signed individually. We don't need unions. We don't need the rest of the workplace. It is just individually. So let's think about common law contracts. Well, an advantage is they're pretty flexible, that I as an individual can go in there and ask for all the things I want, and the employer can ask for the things that suit them. It also rewards extra effort, so that if I say I will work more hours or I will take more responsibility, then I could potentially get higher pay. The disadvantages are that they offer less protection than other agreements, so actually workers may end up um, losing out or um, at least having uh, less options if something goes wrong. And that actually if I'm not very strong in negotiating, I could get, uh, I could be worse off um, or I could be exploited if the employer is much stronger and uh, much more powerful in those negotiations. So that could be an issue with these type of contracts.